All right, hey, what's up, guys? Uh, so the first thing that I did here was I started out with a, a mix of red beige and burnt umber, and I did that because I wanted this to be a bit of a warmer looking skin tone than what I normally do. As you can see, I covered the entire figure uh, with the base color. Up next, and I apologize for blocking uh, with my hand there, and I do change the camera up uh, after this bit once I realized what I was doing. Sorry, I'm using a, a black brown uh, and outlining every every part of it, the eyes, uh, the around the mouth, the nose, and all, like the shadow under the nose. So all of that's getting filled in right here. And here you can see I'm actually taking the brush and I'm going down the insides of the helmet. And I'm just go around the back side as well and just fill in all those little crevices where his skin's showing uh, under the helmet. Here I'm using light flush mixed with the red beige and I'm basically laying down the initial highlights. So I'm going along the chin, the ridge of the nose, across the top of the eyebrow and just on the outsides of the eyes there. And here I'm blending it in so that'll, like if you take a dry brush and you kind of roll it out a little bit, you'll be able to feather those edges if you're getting a hard edge. And now the camera's out of focus, but essentially I'm doing the exact same thing. And here I felt he's literally looking a little bit monochrome, so I'm going to mix in a little bit of dark vermilion red into it, and dark vermilion red and red beige, and now I'm kind of going in between those highlights and undercutting the eyes. And here I'm taking light flush and I'm dumping it into the, the eye socket. And then I take the black brown and I dump it in his pupils. And then I just go back in with that red beige and I undercut the eye. Here I'm doing more highlighting, just kind of bringing it back if I, if I wiped any away. You want to exaggerate. That's one of the key things is exaggerate. So I'm taking the really light flesh and touching it just barely, you know, very thin down paint. Almost like a glaze and touch it in all the corners of his nostrils, as the tip of his nose and all that. Okay, so we want to blend all these layers together. And so what I did after that is I made a glaze, a very, very thin glaze of the base color red beige, basically connecting the lines in between the shadows and the highlights. And like I said, this is a very, very thin uh, layer of paint. It's almost like water. And that's why you'll see me with the brush uh, you, wiping it against my thumb. I'm doing that because where I'm thinning the paint down, I, want, I don't want it to run all over the figure. So before before I put it to the figure, I put it on my hand first. So here I was looking at him and I was like, oh, he's, he's good enough to move on now. So we'll come back to the face, but for right now, we're gonna stop working on it and move to something else. So basically I'm putting down a base coat of military green. I'm gonna do this both on the helmet and the pants. At this point, I'm keeping the paint at a milky consistency. And then I move down to the pants. I have a glove on because I, I'm going to have to touch the figure to hold on them. So sometimes you wear gloves, sometimes you don't. It's probably good to always wear gloves. Uh, anytime that you're working with a figure, he's in kind of a weird pose like this where you have to pin them weird. 
So here you can see I pinned him to a cork because he fell off my wood block. And so with the cork, if I needed to pull him out, I can pull him out. And once again, I'm kind of going in and I'm making sure that I get paint on every bit of the surface. here I'm going ahead and gonna start the highlights so to make this highlight I mixed military green with sunny skin tone and if you're wondering why I use sunny skin tone well it's because you don't want to use whites what that will do is it'll just desaturate your color and uh, it won't help you any same with your blacks you don't you don't want to use too many unless you want the color to be black you don't want to use black in your mixes So with the pants painted, I uh, got German camo orange, and I started putting that down for the base color of the jacket. I wanted us to have uh, like he, like he had just been reissued a uh, new jacket, so I wanted it to be like that dark yellow. So once I had the jacket colored up, I switched to the German black brown that I was using earlier, and I'm putting that on his cuffs and on the collar of the jacket. And this is, once again, this is just the first color that I'm laying down. I'm wanting to get all the base colors down. For his undershirt that's kind of sticking out there at the jacket, I used World War II beige. And uh, I don't know why I jumped that. Sometimes I jump around when I'm working on a figure, but yeah, I jumped to that. And I guess when I went ahead and got that filled in. So we have kind of two different tones going on there. And then I went in with the black brown again and did his cuffs on the jacket. All right, so next I mixed in some brown umber. I mixed that in with the dark yellow and I'm going in and I'm hitting all the shadows. And they're a little stark at first. As we move on, we'll, we'll blend them in. Next up I jumped to the boots, so after I got the shadows down I went to the boots and I mixed just a regular uh, Vallejo leather brown and I covered the entire boot with that. So once that was dry I switched to the gloves and I mixed in the World War II beige with a leather brown and I used it on, those, on his gloves give it that sheepskin look. Okay, now I'm using straight saddle brown because we want a different leather look on the helmet. So then for the goggles I jumped to green gray just to have something a little bit different on the palette and I went over the, the entire liner of the goggles with that. You'll see me kind of using this gray around a little bit. What I had done, you can notice in the goggle, there's a, when it flips back around, that there was a, a, a bluish hue in there. I added in a little azure blue with the gray that I was working with, and I dumped that into the lenses of the goggles first. And then I mixed in a little sky blue with that original gray color, and outlined the very tip tops of the goggles. I kind of put some sky blue in the lens and then I mixed in azure blue. Then I went to outlining the boots so I started out with straight black and I'm just going to do the bottom of the boots there. Okay so off camera I uh, added blonde hair to them and I used a khaki and that World War II beige and uh, to give them blonde hair. I also went in and did his eyebrows. 
and then what I decided was he still looked a bit monochrome to me and so I mixed in that azure blue with my flesh tone and did some color tests there and then I just kind of filled in there at the bottom of the face and well, it's really really thin paint I can't stress you enough like how thin it is there's barely any paint on that brush okay so once I started doing the face once I felt like the face was good I started working on his holster as you can see I went straight off the sculpt there and I realized it I'm like well we'll fix that in a minute <laughs> so uh, pay attention to where your sculpt is going sometimes you start to look at it and it'll, and it'll start to blend together on you but I do go back and fix that later on so I started out with black brown on the on the holster and I just fill it literally fill it all in okay so next up while the strap was done I went and started doing highlights on the jacket that is dark yellow mixed with light flesh and notice I'm not dry brushing I'm following the seams of the sculpt so and it's not exactly directly on top of the lines it's kind of on the upper edge of the lines when you dry brush you only hit the outside of the lines you don't want to do that it makes all your highlights look exactly the same next up was saddle brown on the holster so we have that black brown there that's kind of separating it from the jacket but now we want to go in there and really make it look like worn leather and with this I'm not exactly painting over the whole thing I'm sorry it's hard to see but I'm actually just kind of going in and making streaks touching the brush on the high points you want to look like it's been beat up and worn and I'm adding uh, more highlights onto the helmet so once your paints dry they might dry kind of dark so you kind of want to go back and watch for it so I mixed in that light flesh tone that I've been using and then also mix it in with that saddle brown and I start highlighting the tops of the leather bits and you can see that everything's kind of getting an outline to it I just kind of touched up some highlights places where I thought light would be hitting more so it's all about at this point it's really about just perking them up everything's kind of already in place You see, I also painted the ranks in. They weren't, uh, they weren't sculpted on, so I had to do it you know, to the best of my ability. Uh, for the armor badge, I use azure blue, flat red, and flat yellow, and then I outlined that with military green. Right here, I decided. Uh, I realized that I had forgotten to paint his boot laces, so I went back in and uh, rock them boot laces and then the last little bit to add is a little bit of a gloss varnish right there on the lenses of the goggles and that's war buddy i want to thank you guys so much for watching and uh, i'll be sharing this guy on a project with you guys soon take care